Pasi Anfas 3.7 Breath is likened to water. Breath is likened to water. The flowing of the breath is like the flowing of a stream. Inhalation and exhalation show ebb and flow. Parts of the earth which water does not touch remain barren. So the centers in the body, with all their intuitive, innate capacities, remain unproductive if the breath does not reach them. Besides, various diseases, in spite of all their apparent causes, often have one principal cause, and that is the lack of free flow of breath. Many operations could be avoided, and several diseases could be cured by the knowledge of the phenomena of breath. The Hindu sacred rivers, Ganga and Jamna, are outward symbols of Jalal and Jamal, the two directions of the flow of the breath. And the place where they meet is called Sangam, the meeting or unity, which is considered most sacred by the Hindus. That Sangam is the meeting of these two opposite flows. It is like the meeting of the two directions in the center, which is called Kamal by the Sufis. The water rises, passes, falls, and runs zigzag, and stands if held. So does breath. Every above-mentioned action of breath has a meaning and has a particular effect, as even water varies in its power and magnetism while going through the above-said directions. Water is a tonic, and breath is life itself. No tonic can be greater and better than breath. A spiritually evolved person's presence, therefore, brings about a cure in cases where all remedies fail. Water is the necessity of life, and the breath the only condition for living. Without it, life is impossible. Water falls as rain from above. So breath is from above also, though from another dimension. Water rises as vapors. So breath rises with geysers, also with joys or depressions. Pure water is health-giving. Pure breath gives life. Water partakes of all things mixing with it. So does breath. So Marshall speaks here comparing the element of life that is so essential to the life of our bodies and indeed of all organic life on earth, recognized in the Vedas and in the Quran as the very source of life, all life made from water. In the beginning was water. Now Moshit speaks of the of the sacred rivers and how they flow in India in two great channels descending from the Himalayas, Ganga and Jamna, and how these sacred rivers are like the rivers of subtle magnetism that flow through the body, the nadis, Ida and Pingala, these two 
parallel channels of subtle vitality that move through the subtle centers and which converge in the forehead. So Mushit compares the Jalal force, which functions on the right side of the body, and the Jamal force, which functions on the left side, to the Ganga and Jamna, converging in the Sangam, the place of convergence, of unity, which in Sufi language represents the Kamal force, which is either the balance of power and beauty, the positive and negative channels, the balance of them, or the manner in which they cancel out each other and usher in destruction. There's a um, an annihilating power in the convergence of the two great channels in the universe and in ourselves. And that annihilation can bring about the end of a cycle of, of realization, the realization of an intention, the sustaining of a of a work on earth, the Kamal force can be the unwinding, the chaos and the destruction of what is at its end. But it can also be the opening beyond polarity into the consciousness of divinity. So Mushid is making a, a comparison between the philosophy of yoga and the philosophy of Sufism. And one could also um, invoke the Kabbalah, the Sephirot in Kabbalah, Chesed and Gavura. Chesed representing the Jamal force, of the force of, of kindness, and Gavura representing the, the sense of strength or the Jalal force. And the study of physiology shows that these, these metaphysical principles are present and active in the subtle anatomy of the human being, in the body of vibration. And the, the great sacred rivers of the world are symbolic of this. So Moshe's language here reminds us that um, our inner landscape mirrors the outer landscape, just as there are mountains and valleys and varied terrain through which water moves. So within our bodies, a certain kind of water moves. And yes, um, physically speaking, um, H2O constantly flows through us. That is well known, but Moshe is speaking metaphorically here to remind us of the currents of subtle magnetism that flow in rivers and streams and creeks irrigating the whole body. And those parts of the body that become parched, that is to say devoid of this flow of magnetism, well there, um, what is there shrivels up just as um, seeds and uh, roots become dormant in a drought, the dormant faculties in us, subtle centers which dry out and, and wither and don't die completely, but they, they're simply uh, dormant and vestigial until irrigated and quenched by water. And then it's just like uh, watching the desert come to life, the arid landscape after a strong rain brings forth uh, green shoots of um, innumerable kinds. And one might have never imagined that all of that life was there in the parched ground. It was there, but it took water to reveal it. 
So the same is true of our subtle bodies. And what is the water? The water is the breath. And it's, it's the breath of the breath. It's prana. It's the energy of the breath. To learn to draw it in, to direct it, to irrigate the dry places, brings to life the verdure of the body, which is otherwise hidden in desiccated roots. So in so many ways, the subtle breath is like water. It's a refreshing tonic. It's the fundamental ingredient of life, the necessity of life from which all living beings emerge. It descends upon the crown. It descends as rain, but it also rises. When one thinks of water, one thinks of the great hydrological cycle of how the water of the planet is heated and evaporates, becomes vapor, rises up toward the sky, and there condenses, precipitates, and descends as rain. So there's a constant cycle linking earth and heaven. And this is the nature of our soul's journey, how the soul precipitates and descends, becomes crystallized more and more, um, concentrated in tangible form, and thus descends from the heavens to the earth, and flows through the landscapes of this planet, moves through this earthly terrain, but at last evaporates, at last becomes finer, becomes diffuse, transcends the boundaries of name and form and ascends back into a heavenly condition. But the cycle is, is endless because spirit is one. So our souls are ultimately inseparable from other souls. In this sense, there is reincarnation, but not in the egoic sense in which that um, concept is often imagined. It's that one spirit continuously Condense, precipitates, condenses, descends to earth, flows through the earth, and evaporates and returns to the great al-ama, the great cloud, the cloud that is the source of our crystallized manifestation. So water is a profound symbol of the cycle of manifestation and return. <coughs> 